One would be to leverage every resource that you have on your campus. And if there is a Center for Service Learning, and if your university views it as valuable, that's so helpful. If not, there are so many resources that are available. The Center for Service Learning nationally has just multiple, multiple resources. The second thing would be, I think, really uh, taking time to engage your students in what it means, why it's important, why it matters to you, and how it will benefit them. I think that's really, really important. Uh, the third thing is just having good partners. And again, the Center for Service Learning here at Western has been great. But the first year I did, I found the partner um, on my own. People are so eager to really reach out and to take advantage of what the students can offer. And the fact that we're in an advanced visual journalism class means that there are so many things that social service agencies need, including logo design and brochure design and multimedia pieces and help on their websites that um, in some ways um, the students are really well positioned because they have skills that are really really um, very highly sought after. And then I would say a another tip would really be to create this calendar of what what's going to happen and who's going to do it and who's responsible. Another thing that I think is really important is to um, really expect the students to be professional. And for the most part, they really are. But they really need to have things done on time. They need to be ready for critique. They need to have things done. And they need to interact with their partner in a way that's very open but very professional. Um, and then the other thing is, is I think sometimes just to accept that just to tell your class that some projects will be easier and some will not be. Um, I've had in the same class five teams. Uh, some have partners who get stuff back to them, who are great to work with, who are congenial, who are very clear about what their needs are. And in that same class, partners who aren't quite as on top of stuff or aren't sure what, uh, what they really need. So I've learned from that that it's really great you know, it's hard to know ahead of time what all you're going to run into, but if you can establish in the first couple of weeks who's responsible, um, if they are the ones that indeed can make the decisions, because design by committee, not very helpful. So that's another thing is to really ascertain um, who has the sign-off power and to make sure that you incorporate them in decisions. So every quarter, it's kind of a learning experience of um, what to look out for next. Depending on the number of teams and the number of partners, on the second day of class, the partners come and make a pitch uh, for what they uh, want done. And it's great for the students because they get to meet the potential partner. And then what I have them do is I have a form that I've prepared of the partner's name and then what they want, what the project is, and then the benefits, the challenges, and what skills would be required. And I have that for each one of the partners. And then at the end of that class period, I ask them to say what would be their top choice, what would be their second choice. And then, of course, I take that into consideration uh, when I devise the teams. And sometimes all we have enough teams for all the partners to be accommodated. Sometimes uh, we have more partners than we have teams. So it really just depends. But I really think on that second class period, giving the students a chance to weigh in on what they want to work on really helps them be invested in the partner. That's not to say that they all get the partner that they choose, because I tell them we Everybody, when you go into your jobs, you're not going to get to choose what store you work on or what interview you have to go do. On the other hand, I do try to take that in consideration. 